Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're listening to KHS 1220 and uh, 98.1 FM. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show. And Mr. Engineer, how do you spell Ask Brian? B-R-I-E-N. And why is the emphasis on E and who in the world spells the name Brian with an E? Well, you know what, Brian? You know who spells P? You know the type of people that spell E? The people that are empathetic, that give a lot of effort, ones that can be engineers, Ones that are have are thriving with just excellence, and am I forgetting one? No, empathy. Ones that are empathetic too. And what about experts? Experts too. You got to be an expert to be on this show. You got me again, Brian. I don't know. We're gonna have to replace you. I don't know what's going on here, pal. <laughs> Come on, man. We need to have all those E's. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, we do have a great show, and obviously, always want to welcome my co-host Lindsay. Man. Thank you, Brian. Great to be here. I love Thursdays. It's my favorite day because I get to learn about my favorite subject, business. That's right. <laughs> and we're going to learn a lot about it today. We have, uh, before we get into that, though, some people have not watched the Ask Brian radio show, don't know about the Ask Brian website spelled with an E. And so for that, we have to go over a little explanation, a little information for you. The Ask Brian radio show was established part of the AskBrian.com network and part of the Ask Brian website. And basically, Ask Brian is to teach people a business lesson each week. We're on every Thursday, 1 to 2 p.m. The website itself at AskBrian.com has two distinct portions. It has a business community, and at the business community, other people in the same industry can ask questions. So the plumber in New Orleans can ask the plumber in New York, hey, I got this plumbing problem, can you help me out? Because you know what? It really doesn't matter what state you're in. You know, if the toilet doesn't flush, the toilet doesn't flush. Now, we also have another part of the site, and that is for experts. And so if you want to become an expert on the S. Bryan site, you have to qualify to become an expert. And we don't allow anyone to become an expert. You need typically need 10,000 hours in the same subject matter. That is based on subjects, So whereas the business side is plumber to plumber. We're looking on the expert side. We're looking marketer, accountant, salesperson, uh, digital digital agency, et cetera, et cetera. We're learning based on, on the type of industry that you work at. So to become an expert, if you have 10,000 hours in one subject, which is 40 hours a week, 50 hours a year, okay, that's 2,000 times five, typically you're going to be an expert. There's no guarantee that you will be. Uh, also, we have people that are not at 10,000 hours, but have such an expertise, such a following, and are such well known that they're allowed to become an expert anyway. And each expert has their own expert profile, which allows them to put on blogs, videos. They have their own profile. They can put up webinars, and they can schedule their webinars on a national calendar that allows people to watch webinars at any time. So that's what Ask Brian is all about. And without any further ado, we have two guests today, actually three, but two comp representing two companies. And this is part of our new uh, part of our show where we have a, a guest once a month. We're going to have, probably have two or more guests. So our first guest uh, we have is um, Jeff, and then we have Chris and Carter. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you, you actually have uh, Chase and Carter here from Chase Champions and Carter. Brown, but okay. uh, thanks for having us on the show. It's great to be here. Well, we appreciate that. Thanks, Ryan. And so the first thing we want to go over is uh, we're going to go over individual. We just want to get a little background. So, Jeff, uh, you have a company there. It has something to do with influence and TikTok. And we're not talking about my, my watch. That's not TikTok. But anyway, could you explain to us what you do, what your company does, and your prior background? Just briefly. Yes, no, absolutely. So thanks for having me on the show. It, it's great to be here. Maven's List is a social transactional network that provides seamless and secure mobile booking systems for brands, venues, charities, educational institutions, and more. So not only do we match brands with influencers, we have an in-app escrow system that mitigates the biggest risk factor for businesses and brands booking talent, which is the funds getting paid to the artist or influencer and those funds being paid after the job is done. So within our platform, both parties agree to a set of terms and if one or the other doesn't follow those terms they give Maven's List the permission to be the referee so if 
a influencer doesn't post their TikTok as required from a brand or their social media posts, then those funds are returned back to the business. But as long as they do their job, they get paid. And we also provide transparency between talent managers and influencers. So are you essentially matching the talent with the people that need it? Uh, is that what you do? And is it by software or, or do you actually physically do it yourself? So yeah, we actually, it's two parts. So within our platform, you're able to log in and we kind of have like a dating type of slide feature, almost kind of like on Tinder where you can swipe left or swipe right. Or we have a directory where you can go through and filter the influencers that you specifically are looking for. And the swipe left or swipe right feature, it is matched by different factors you put in, like the type of business, where your business is from, what type of customers you're trying to reach, and it pulls up a gallery that you can swipe left or right on. Or you can manually, as a business owner, go through a list, pick the specific influencer, and then send them the money on demand. And what makes our platform unique is that when you send the offer to the influencer, they can accept the offer, counter the offer, or decline the offer. And once they accept it, the terms are put into escrow until so both parties are locked into an agreement. And uh, the money can be sent in any manner or is it a specific form? Yes, yeah, so we use bank to bank transfers, ACH, and we also do credit card payments. So the cool thing with our platform is if you're a business owner, maybe you don't have the full funds to wire it, you can use your credit card and we just charge a, a small processing fee for credit card or debit card transactions. And, and how long have you been around and what did you do prior? Yeah, so Maven's List has been around since August of 2019, so we just did our beta test almost a year ago, and we've been ramping our product and going through new iterations since then. I've been in the influencer marketing space for 13 years. I started my first influencer marketing company in 2008 when I was a sophomore in college, and I definitely saw early on the desire and need of brands to hone in on their evangelists and hone in on their key customers and that those same key customers were fans of reality stars, athletes, actresses, and other celebrities that we now call influencers. So back in 2007, when I was attending school at Columbia College Chicago, influencer marketing was very new. Instagram hadn't been birthed yet. We just had Foursquare, Twitter, and Facebook, and a lot of people saw it as a fad. They didn't really know where it was going to go, and here we are 13 years later where you have TikTok stars making making $500,000 a day in bookings. And, and how much is through your company of that 500000 if you don't mind me? Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, so I mean, actually today we just did two deals with two notable people that are confidential, but we did one transaction for 500000 and another transaction for 250000 So every day it varies, but there's a lot of brands that are trying to reach the Gen Z and Gen Alpha audience. I think TikTok is very effective at that. And then you have everyday other bookings where you have global brands wanting to book a hip hop artist or a pop star to endorse a product or service. I think another thing that makes Maven's List unique is this tool hasn't really been available for Main Street. So now you have, you know, local businesses in Chicago or Boston or Kansas City now with the ability to book someone that can affect their bottom line on demand and build those transactional relationships so that they can continue to prosper. And how do you determine the fee? That's determined between the two parties? Yep, so the two parties. That's a, It's a dynamic uh, pay structure. So with eBay, kind of how the price goes up and down based on you know the demand or how much someone wants it, it's the same with Maven's List. So we have two forms of offers. One's a public offer where influencers and businesses can post I'm an influencer, I'm doing red carpet appearances, or I'm a business looking for an influencer to do an in-store appearance or to do a social media post. And that's a flat price where both parties can apply and then pick the person they want. And the direct offer, which is our main um, group of 
our clients use. You can send the offer and go back and forth on the price. So you can send someone an offer for five thousand dollars. They can counter and say, no, my rate is fifty thousand. But the cool thing with that is there's always times when maybe an artist is in town and there's nothing really going on, especially right now during the pandemic where a lot of artists would be touring or performing. They're taking maybe smaller deals for social media posts than they would. And so our, our plan allows for a dynamic exchange and pricing model for the talent. And, and you earn a, what, a commission on each transaction? So we don't take anything from the artist, and so we are we really are a financial intermediary. We charge the business owner a 10% transaction fee. Well, that's pretty good on a $500,000 transaction. You're getting 50 grand. Yes, and so businesses are willing to pay that transaction fee because all too often they pay an artist or influencer in advance, and after they pay that person in advance. The person's gone to China or has fled the building. They don't know where to find them. And it's the interesting thing is that the FBI fraud department, you know, deals with a lot of entertainment fraud. It's one of the biggest frauds that occur. And so there's so many nefarious middlemen that say that they represent an artist or say that they represent and can broker a deal. And really, they receive the funds, and then that business owner is kind of stuck out of luck because they have no way to recoup those funds. Wow. Jeff, <clears throat> is, this a, is this a platform only for TikTok or are there other social um, platforms that, that the influencers can use as well? Yes, and you know what? The influencer to me, um, as the founder of Maven's List, is kind of a broad term. So I consider an influencer anyone that impacts a business enterprise and increases the sales or notoriety of such business. So influencer could be a doctor who's an expert in their field. It could be a news anchor. It can be a social media star, an actress, athlete, golf player, etc. So we don't, you know, definitely TikTok is the biggest driver right now. We do have a lot of the biggest TikTok stars under our umbrella and our belt, and they trust us because for so long there wasn't really a direct way for them to know if the person that was representing them was really being fair and transparent, because unlike some of the other industries like film or other representations with the, some of the new me, new emerging media like TikTok, um, there weren't any representatives there. So we were able to find a lot of people a great and safe home at Maven's List where they feel comfortable. But to answer your question, it's a broad range of, of individuals that we consider influencers mm -hmm. so, that are on our platform. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Jeff. Carter and Chris, Lindsay has some questions for you. Uh, yeah. Well, not right now. We're, I'm, we're just talking about TikTok right now. No, no, no. All right, so, hey, Chris, so uh, we just wanted to also find out a, bit, a little bit about your company and uh, how that works. So what is your company? Sure. Hi, so this is Carter speaking. Um, so basically, we are uh, building really revolutionary games for the sports fan of tomorrow. Um, but first, I kind of want to ask, you know, I know this is an Ask Brian question, but I'm going to start with a question for you. Um, what is your favorite movie? Um, Fugitive with Indiana Jones. Caddyshack. Yeah. Oh, those are great answers. <laughs> and you know, what's awesome about a great movie is it just keeps you engaged from the beginning credits all the way until the end. You know, it can make time absolutely fly by. And that's really the promise that you get with every entertainment product that you sign up with. Yet somehow we found that fantasy sports is one of the few exceptions. Uh, currently, one out of every five Americans plays fantasy sports, uh, but it's a game mode that has really been the same for about 40 years. You draft a team at the beginning of the season with your friends. It's one of the coolest things you do around sports. However, in about three weeks, you're going to find out that a significant portion of your league either drafted a bad team, had a key injury, or whatnot, ultimately finding that they have no actual reasonable way of winning their fantasy league. And at that point, those people stop paying attention. Um, so to us, we saw that as really a glaring issue, that such a big industry fails to keep people engaged throughout an entire season. And we've also found that the esports industry uh, has a really hard time engaging people that aren't actual video game fans. So uh, we've built and designed Champions Round to solve exactly that. 
In doing so, we're introducing new verticals into the fantasy sports space for both esports and traditional sports, designed at A, making esports accessible to all, all types of sports fans, not just video game fans, uh, B, building a fantasy sports game mode that allows people to constantly play again, stay engaged, and have something to do from the beginning of a season until the end, and three, to create a game mode that allows for the best odds to actually win cash when playing fantasy sports. Um, and we do that in a couple ways. Uh, when it comes to traditional sports, we take seasons and we break them up into smaller rounds, which means there's multiple times a year that you can draft with your friends or you can decide to draft against the world. Uh, we'll talk about our backgrounds a little bit uh, as we get a little further in the show, but um, we're gamers. We have a lot of experience when it comes to gamification, and we built a highly gamified platform that allows for there always to be milestones for someone to achieve while playing fantasy sports. And uh, lastly, because we break seasons up into all these smaller chunks, um, if you play these for cash, you actually have a really good chance of winning money as opposed to what you would do if you played DraftKings today. Um, on top of that, we've also developed a live action game mode that synchronizes with live broadcasts of esports uh, that are very comprehensible to anyone, not just, in, not just someone who's very intimate uh, when it comes to a particular game. As a result, you can play it while you watch a live broadcast it makes it a thousand more times fun to watch. You answer simple questions that can also educate you about the broadcast that you're watching. And as you get them right, you win more cash. Um, and all of that coalesces into our Champions Round metagame where users level up, progress, earn unlockables, earn collectibles, and earn access to bigger cash jackpot prizes as well. And how long have you been doing that? Yeah, so we launched our first beta product uh, last September. Um, we've launched two beta products to date, uh, September through uh, January for the NFL season, and an additional product uh, for the NFL draft. As a result, we are able to see that we had some really high engagement within the last two weeks. Uh, we are up to 73% of our users were playing at the very end of our beta, which is, uh, to us, proving our most important hypothesis. And we actually peaked at number six on the App Store for sports apps on iOS. Well, that, that's pretty good. Um, Lindsay had some questions. <clears throat> well, actually, I'm sorry. I'm having a initiative speaking right now. Um, I, I don't know very, I don't know a lot about football. I certainly know that men love fantasy football. <laughs> yes. So my question Go would be, Jets. Oh, you guys have a new platform. Oh, wait, I'm a Jets fan too. Oh, my God. <clears throat> We're wow. the only two people in the world. Okay, well, I know. <laughs> I'm, eng I'm English, uh, the England uh, Tom Brady's team. <laughs> That's the Tampa Bay. He was traded. Not traded. He became a free agent. Oh, okay. See, I don't know anything. So, uh, how's do you guys? You're in beta right now. They how's uh, how's everything going? You guys have how many users? Uh, yeah. So, uh, right now we have uh, we're only on iOS, uh, but we have over 4,000 registered users, uh, 6,500 app installs. And uh, we have a little over uh, 8,000 people on our mailing list, a lot of which are waiting for our Android release. That's awesome. And uh, our, full, our full release is around the corner of the September for an NFL season, which hopefully actually happens. <laughs> and um, th this is really going to be our true year coming out with our full product. And how much could one expect to pay for this? How, how does that work? Yeah, so um, there's a couple ways that you can play. You can you can decide just to play for free, uh, in which we can monetize by showing advertisements. Uh, but uh, it's best enjoyed by leveling up within our app, and if you decide to play for cash prizes. Basically, if you decide to play for money, it's up to you how much you want to put in. But, for example, if you wanted to play in a, a league for you know, a $20 buy-in, um, the winning proceeds would be paid out to the top performing players. So it's 100% free to play. It can be best enjoyed by deciding to put money on the line. And uh, you can be uh, constantly you know, improving, earning collectibles, or purchasing them directly for cash. How fun. And who, who decides uh, what presents to choose and you know, what what kind of rewards? Uh, Chase, you want to speak to that? Huh? Chase, are you there? 
Hey guys. Yes, Chase is here. Not Chris. Chase. Chase is here. <laughs> From earlier. He's never going to let me live, live me down. No, Brian. I'm going to spell B R I A N for a while. Uh, since, uh, well, all that I'm going to say is go Jets, go Jets, go Jets, go Jets. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So, sorry, uh, to answer your question, uh, you know, the, the reward experience is actually really important for our players. Uh, we wanted to take a step further from the traditional models and introducing non-monetary but also monetary rewards. So uh, we come from a, a background where giving players more to play for, um, that's something that's important to us. So you could win something like a, a game jersey uh, from, a, for, from your favorite player or fan experience or straight cash. Um, so we, we, we carve it up depending on the uh, intended user experience. You know what would be really cool is if you can like set up uh, meetings for the people who win the the fantasy to actually meet some of the football players like and get or get like a jersey autographed or something, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got it. So that's actually really important from our value proposition is you know celebrating your favorite sport shouldn't be a seasonal uh, activity. You feel like you can celebrate your favorite sport any day of the year. So creating those moments is where our real focus is. So that that event you just described could happen today. It could happen, you know, next month. Um, focusing on where those moments are and serving the fan of tomorrow where they are is uh, where we feel like is the real opportunity. And how do you guys earn money? Yeah. So, so we actually uh, have uh, money in a – oh, well, this is the talking, the, the, the cloud. I'll let Carter answer the question. Um, well, yeah. So basically, if you use play for cash, we retain a percentage of that prize pot, whereas the remainder is paid out to winners. Um, we have uh, a highly gamified app, very similar to kind of what you see in mobile app gamification. We brought that to fantasy sports. So as users progress and earn collectibles, uh, unlockables, uh, bonuses, you can also uh, skip ahead by purchasing those directly for cash. Uh, lastly, we're uh, working with brands and we're going to be cleverly baking in ads into our app. Some will be directly on our avatars or in the customized, customizable items that you can unlock. Some will be inline banners. Others will be, you know, brand takeovers. Um, you know, for example, a contest is sponsored by a particular brand, then the app is themed according to that. So a couple couple uh, means of monetization, but those are three main uh, we're gonna, drivers. We're going to have to take a break. We'll be right back. You'll listen to KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. This is Bradley Gross from Santa Clarita Grocery. Santa Clarita Grocery serves fresh groceries to families, individuals, and those experiencing homelessness. At Santa Clarita Grocery, out of every dollar donated, a full 99 cents goes directly to the needs being addressed. As an all-volunteer-led organization, we operate on a 1% overhead, receiving no government funding for our operations in the community, resulting in us being one of the most efficient charities in the Santa Clarita Valley. If you're looking to support the good for our community, please consider partnering with us by donating to Santa Clarita Grocery. What is donated is specifically kept in the Santa Clarita Valley, helping over 3,000 families, including five other community charities. Please visit our website, santaclaritagrocery.org, or visit us on social media or call us at 425-7575. That's 425-7575. Doesn't it seem like it's been forever since we sat down in a restaurant and enjoyed a meal with our friends and our family? As the clock counts down to the expiration date of the current stay-at-home order, many of our local businesses are working hard getting ready to reopen, and that includes restaurants. Ultimately, it's up to our local health officials and our local restaurants to come up with safety plans moving forward, but we can help too. Plan on no more than an hour of dining out. If we don't linger, it allows more turnover for the restaurant, which in turn provides more business for them and more tips for servers who are out on the front line. It's a win-win. Together, we can create a new normal for Santa Clarita that's safe and enjoyable. Right now at IHOP, order any breakfast combo and we'll sweeten the deal with all-you-can-eat pancakes. So get out your all-you-can-eat silverware because these pancakes aren't going to all-you-can-eat themselves because pancakes don't do that. Get IHOP's all-you-can-eat pancakes with any breakfast combo. Or just get the all-you-can-eat pancakes for $4.99. What else you got going on today? 
If you have a business problem, if someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years experience, the Law Office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the Law Office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Hometown, your hometown station. Welcome, welcome. You're listening to KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM, and you're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show. And we had we have two guests today, or actually two companies, three guests, and we've had a really, really good show so far. And Jeff, we've had some people are trying to say, what are were the biggest problems you had in launching a business? Absolutely, I think launching a business is a complicated terrain, you know, to embark on, especially because you know, there's so many skill sets that you don't learn in the traditional educational system. So I would say, you know, going to a school like Columbia College Chicago, where I had adjunct professors, and I got to kind of jump right into my key um, studies was great. It, that definitely helped me because it kind of got me on the track of knowing like what I wanted to do. But so starting an LLC or a C corp and the whole startup of not being a technical founder but having to find the best talent so I could make my vision come to life. There are many aspects that were difficult. Um, I would say, you know, the first three developers I had were horrible and <laughs> weren't good at all. And it took me, you know, flying to the Ukraine and going to different countries and kind of seeing firsthand that that wasn't the best way to, to start an app. So I would say it was a lot of Definitely, on my side, not being a technical founder, but having the industry knowledge, it was a blessing and a curse because I had to really hone in on the technical aspect and find the right players and the right team members that would help me enable this to, to go to life. And so for those, when you actually did find the right developers, uh, and what is the lesson you learned? What, how do you know that somebody is a good developer? You know, I think that now there's so many key competencies like Agile, a Scrum Master, um, having the right uh, PMP or Black Belt, Six Sigma uh, project manager, someone that has the, the knowledge, um, it really helped. I think for me, finding someone that had 30 years of experience in the IT world, and they were able to really vet the people I was talking to and, and do the due diligence. Also having really good legal agreements and um, chief counsel that's not just someone you talk to like once a month or once a week, but I know with my lawyer, I talk to him almost 23 to 25 times a day. So we're able to kind of stay on top of agreements and partnerships before anything were to go sour and kind of manage and massage the relationships so that they do continue to work. Um, but yeah, that's kind of been been my experience. And now having a great team, um, I do everything on the front end here in Los Angeles. I think it's very important to have someone you can sit next to that is doing the front end design and management and knowledge of the architecture. Uh, on the back end, having a team that is very connected to your front end team is very important. Now, um, how many people do you have on your team currently? Right now, I have 11, and, you know, we've had an incredible week. We've been able to raise a great amount of money, so we're kind of onboarding three or four more people. What we're putting our focus on is product management, operations management of the company itself on, on the app side, and then there's a whole other world of operational management when it comes to our influencer relations, business relations, and then talent manager relations. And since we're agnostic to all of the different talent agencies, we have different reps that work with all the kind of big powerhouses and keep us 
in the door there, but our team is small but, but still growing. The odd thing with our app is we have about 75 main influencers at the most right now and maybe 40 business users that are active and we're doing almost $600,000 in not transactions but in transactional fees and revenue. Um, so we haven't even kind of got into even the warm water of our business and we're doing a lot of transactions. So we're using this time to really gain knowledge and build standard operating procedures and develop policies in place for each type of business scenario we have in the business. And I think that's gonna be beneficial for us moving forward. So the other question is, when you're building a platform with business owners and influencers, right? Uh, There's a chicken and egg issue, right? Do you build it first and try to get as many influencers as you can? Or do you build the business side and try to get as many business owners? My, my thought pattern, and you tell me how you did it, my thought pattern would be, you need to get some influencers because if you don't have any influences there's nobody for the business to to broker so i would i would build a platform first with influences and then business owners but uh, you may have done the exact opposite or may think that's a crazy idea what are your thoughts no it's 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 the age-old question that i think everyone is still trying to answer what i chose to do this summer is i picked 10 businesses and i said i want to gain as much as i can about your business all businesses in different sectors so technology companies electronic companies digital um, brands e-commerce brick and mortar, restaurants, meal delivery, all types of different service and, or transactional based businesses. And we asked them what talent they wanted for their brand. And so getting a, a key talent for each brand kind of let us know what different industries were looking for. And then once we saw kind of a sweet spot in a different sector, then we found more influencers that were good for that sector. And then we've just allowed businesses to onboard, and as they onboard and say, you know, I wanna book X person that we don't have on the platform, we then go to that influencer with the offer from the brand, and it's a very easy conversation to onboard the influencer because we have a red hot deal waiting for them. Um, one last question, we gotta go. Uh, how many, how many, uh, how many transactions have you done? We have done, as of today, um, 800 transactions. So you have 40 years, 40 business owners. So that means of doing about 20, 20 transactions each, average. Some even more. Like we have one technology company that has set up a deal with 50 influencers, all individually. Um, we have one of the biggest companies in the world that just joined, and they're um, booking 80 people, and then or 80 influencers. I'm sorry. And I think another thing that we did is we kind of also took a top-down approach. So one of our stakeholders in our company is a veteran in the industry and was able to get us access to one of the biggest multi-conglomerate corporations in the world. And then through them, they own another set of companies. And then so just with that account itself, um, we've been able to book a, a wide variety of people. Well, wow. thank you very much. Uh, now uh, we're gonna switch gears a little bit. Uh, Carter, are you there? Yeah, hi. How you doing? So, uh, How are you? Uh, I think Lindsay has a question too. But before we get there, uh, I wanted to ask you the same same information. I mean, so you're building this system, right? Are you just mm -hmm. sticking with football to start with, or are you going to other sports all at once, or how, how did you do that? Yeah, so uh, we're launching with the NFL, um, which actually, you know, I'm an NBA fan, so I'm hoping to see the day that we get there. Uh, but, you know, the NFL is the market to be in for fantasy sports. So our beta product was around with the NFL, and our first uh, full product, which launches in three months, is also at the start of the NFL season. Um, we're looking at then being able to deploy the NBA in December. However, you know, it's tough during the COVID era to really make any commitments about sports. But um, our first eSports products we're planning to launch uh, with CSGO. And we're aiming for a very early 2021 release of that product. And um, you're gonna price it comparatively the similar to the football? 
That's correct. Uh, you know, the game modes are different because they're different types of, you know, they're different audiences. And uh, the needs of an emerging market are very different than an established one, as in the difference between esports really being something that's coming into its own right now, whereas traditional sports are tried and true. Uh, but ultimately, the monetization paths are exactly the same. Now, uh, h how many sports do you envision when this is fully achieved? I mean, do you have like, are you, know, are you going to be doing like dog sled races in Alaska? I mean, how far are we going? <laughs> you know, I'll pass that off to Chase to answer. <laughs> Chase, the short answer is yes. Every sport matters. <laughs> uh, no, uh, the. Actually, to take a step back, uh, when looking kind of at our platform, um, we really asked ourselves, you know, why is it that my, my favorite friends, a group of friends, only get to you know, gather around our favorite sport half of the year? So if we talk about just the NFL season, it's only 28 calendar weeks if we're talking about the chunk that everyone really loves. But the rest of the year, um, what do you do? So when looking at this approach of celebrating sports uh, year-round, we felt like that challenges with every sport. Uh, so we, we look at just kind of from the beginning of how do I introduce uh, a fan to a sport? Uh, how do I build community uh, within that sport? And then how do I create aspiration? Uh, that's really kind of the formula. And uh, if we're able to pull this off, I believe uh, no sport uh, will be untouched. All right. So, uh, you know, cricket leagues and uh, other types of leagues are, are, are in Australian rules football are waiting, rugby especially. Um, yeah, those are huge, huge markets, huge markets. As I recall, and I'm going to be dating myself, when I first started watching ESPN, that's what they had, Australian rules football, and it was at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I'm probably dating myself, but that was how it started, and uh, ESPN has gotten quite large. Um, so... How do you attract people to your site? I mean, you say you have about 4,000, 8,000 people. How did you get these people to come to your site? Are you doing this, uh, an ad campaign or, you know, friends? How, how are you getting it done? You know, it's great that Jeff is on here because a lot of our success has been attributed to influencer marketing. Um, we have been able to acquire a lot of organic users. Um, about more than 80% of our users were invited by one of their friends to play. But for those 20% that we acquired directly, uh, we do a blend of things. Uh, one, we're very active on social media, and we've cultivated a pretty good following uh, specific to NFL content. Two, uh, we do a lot of really good performance marketing to make sure that we're really uh, displaying advertisements in the correct place. And three, uh, we have some brand ambassadors on the team, and uh, we have worked with some YouTube influencers in the past that have had you know, fantastic returns. So actually, to give credence to Maven's list and what Jeff is building, um, it really is the way of the future. Uh, we're targeting a Gen Z audience, and they're the most receptive audience that there has ever been to influencers. Uh, it's been probably the best return on investment that we spent when it comes to marketing. Wow. And um, so I, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Jeff. We still have about five or six minutes before we're going to take a break. When you were starting the business to you guys, what was the biggest obstacle you faced? You know, I kind of want to answer this on a personal level and as well as on a professional, uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, obstacles. Um, for me, I feel that the hardest, uh, it wasn't the hardest thing, but it was something that was uh, a, a bit of an eye opener. Um, I've always worked uh, as a systems administrator, always analytical, um, but I've never been in a sales role before. I didn't realize that when becoming the CEO of a company, you know, obviously the, the goal is to recruit good talent, to set a culture, but ultimately my job has become a sales role. I'm constantly selling, the cus uh, selling our product to customers, selling it to investors, selling it to partners, uh, ultimately making sure that people can see the vision that I have in it. So I didn't expect that I would become a salesperson, but ultimately I found that you know, when you're passionate about something, there's an acumen for it. And uh, kind of on a personal level, you know, I found that what, the one thing that really makes the moxie of an entrepreneur is a lot of, it's pretty easy to have a really, an idea you're passionate about and start a company when you're wide-eyed, you know, you're rested, you're excited about what you're doing. You think that you have this idea that's going to light the world on fire. 
But then there's going to be those times where, you know, you're worn down. You've been fighting really hard. You haven't launched anything yet. You're trying to raise money, and you're hearing no, and, you know, there's problems arising. When you go through those valleys and those floss, those troughs of those difficult times, really being able to fit, dig deep and pull yourself out of those and keep moving forward and finding those little wins has been, you know, probably the best thing that I've learned as an entrepreneur. It's been hard, but it's been incredibly rewarding. So what got you through those down cycles? Team. Team. Uh, without a doubt. You know, we have a team that works really hard for each other, cares about each other. You know, one thing that I love working with Chase uh, about, you know, we met on a professional level, but there's some things that you don't really realize up until you work with each other. Yeah, you know, he's hardworking. He's very experienced in the space. You know, he has a great temperament. But... Yeah, the man, the man has good taste. <laughs> you <know? laughs> you can't see me on. blushing. You can't see me blushing, but I'm blushing. Well, I want you to answer the question now, vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> we also can't dismiss that uh, Carter's about six six, and I'm like six one. So I don't meet a lot of people that are like that much taller than me and like enjoy sports like I do. <laughs> but it's been a, it's been a pleasure. But uh, Chase, what, what was the biggest obstacle that you had when you started the business? Yeah, so uh, I'll answer twofold too, professional and uh, personal level. I think professionally, uh, first, it was, you know, my background has always been in video games and entertainment, and I had been in this space before, so I had um, some, some old wounds in which felt is this the right time to go back in? And I think when you when you look at I think the question is, and I go into the pacing of is this the right time? And looking at the business opportunity uh, and asking ourselves, are we the most qualified to solve this problem? Uh, I think that getting started for it uh, is probably the hardest um, part, um, and also recognizing and the type of business in which you know we're trying to build, uh, we're building a, a new way for communities to uh, discover sports, which feels very large because it is. Uh, um, so if I'm going to be introducing uh, a sport to a fan of tomorrow, how do you do that? Where do you start? So it, it feels huge and it's a big mountain, but you got to take the first step. Um, and in doing so, uh, we also have a lot of just great markers around it that let us know that uh, the industry is moving and it's validation, but we've got a, got a long way to go. So getting started was definitely was a, uh, one of, was a really hard part, but now that we've gotten some momentum, it feels uh, it was worth that first step. Uh, on a personal level, uh, you know, when Carter and I met, uh, we actually met right before uh, I had my first kid. <laughs> so, Congratulations. Uh, you know, it, so my first startup is actually my family, right? And uh, my son is uh, about to turn two years old uh, next month. And, you know, the journey of uh, becoming a father and uh, is met with so many uncertainties and being like, am I prepared and this, that, and the other. So I go through all of that and I, I think on a, a timing of, uh, my wife often reminds me that uh, my career doesn't define who I am. And I think that's something uh, when uh, looking at him, uh, he doesn't care what I do, right? He doesn't care that, you know, I talk sports and I'm passionate about this, that, and the other. He loves this COVID period because I'm home all the time, <laughs> right? So uh, it's, a, it's been very rewarding, but of course that uncertainty of um, the impact on family is a uh, uh, so uh, such a such an important uh, conversation to have, and I'm fortunate that I have a great teammate uh, and my wife, uh, and uh, really excited. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. If you have a business problem, if someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years experience, the Law Office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the Law Office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Hi, this is Wendy Hassenflug, yoga and wellness entrepreneur. I'm excited to share one of the best kept secrets in Santa Clarita. Top Out Climbing Gym is one of my favorite places. Rock climbing is exceptional for building upper and lower body strength and it improves your flexibility. Almost anyone can rock climb and you don't have to be super fit to climb. You'll build strength and stamina while having fun at the same time. Get over to Top Out Climbing Gym in Centerpoint and challenge yourself to new heights. 
Hi, I'm Eric Goldhurs, Head of Operations for Burger King North America. Throughout this time, we've taken steps to take care of our guests. And since we know many of your jobs have been affected by this crisis, we want to help make sure you're taken care of too. If you are looking for work, we are hiring. And there's a spot on our team for you. We know that we'll get through this together, as long as we keep taking care of each other. For more information, call 253-3283. That's 253-3283. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your, your hometown station. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're listening to KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. We have two, two big companies, three guests. So we got it all. We've got about six or seven minutes left before we're going to end our show, and I'm going to start crying, as I always do. But we'll be back. We, Jeff, we have a couple questions for you. So if somebody wanted to go ahead and sign up with your, your uh, where would they go? They go to, uh, what's the website? Yep, yep. so they can go to www.mavenslist.app or mavenslist with the S L I S T S dot com. Um, and then once they sign up, either as an influencer or business owner, we send them a private link um, to our, our app. And then from there, they can begin transacting. Next week, uh, we have a web version of our app going live. So now business users pretty much across the world will be able to use the app to search for influencers. And uh, can people start on their own without having to go through a process, and, or do they have to like? Yep, so starting next week, we're opening everything up. We've still technically kind of just been in our private beta and invite-only mode, where we've just had a handful of curated businesses and influencers, but next week we open it up globally to everyone, so there won't be that. But in the meantime, uh, your listeners can go to the, those two websites. Jeff, um, can you spell spell? Maven is was it Mavens or Megan's? Uh, Maven, so M A V E N L I S T. And Maven is an old word for connoisseur or expert. Yeah, wonderful. Just like my co host, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my question is going to be for everyone here today, but uh, Jeff, uh, wondering how did you uh, finance you know, your business and how much money did you take out of your pocket? We know your, your brains took you very far. Uh, and how much you know, investment money did you seek? Yeah, so in starting this whole company so far, I think we've raised about $875,000, including our new raise that we did this week, um, and we're still raising more funds. But yeah, the, the biggest challenge is finding the resource to pay for the best talent possible internally, meaning our employees, our staff, our contractors, our vendors, and that's what enables our company to get better and better is having the right resources allocated to the right people who are truly passionate about making this vision of revolutionizing the entertainment industry come to life. So did you have um, investment right off the bat, or did you have to take money out of your yeah, pocket? So, yeah, so I had investment right off the bat only because I've worked in the entertainment business prior to this, and I was actually working for a billionaire from Shanghai who booked talent every day to go to nightclubs, appearances, red carpets. We would buy a Bugatti just to go out that night. So <laughs> through, through working with him, nice. I was able to meet a lot of people. And so fundraising hasn't always been the most challenging part of this. It's more so been connecting all the dots and getting the industry to change a little bit because we're doing things a little bit different where we're charging the business a fee to book the talent and not taking any money from the talent. So just educating and kind of going through the paradigm shift with everyone. Super. Thank you very much, Jeff. And then we're going to go now switch over to Carter. And so uh, Lindsay has some questions for you. Well, it's, it's basically the same question for you guys. 
Yeah, well, first of all, so I'm going to start off with some shameless promotion. You can find us at championsround.com, www.championsround.com, or you can find us on the App Store. But um, when it comes to uh, fundraising, so uh, it started off by us bootstrapping the company. Um, I was investing pretty heavily in crypto for about three years, and it was during the time in which, you know, it was pretty impossible to lose. So uh, I put in 450 k myself to get the company off the ground, and uh, we've secured another $520,000 from uh, two accelerators, uh, various angels, as well as friends and family. And uh, right now, we're actually le uh, we're, um, raising our series seed, and we actually have a secured lead investor for our seed round as well. Congratulations! Yeah, when you have so many, when you have so many people that are that you're working with, like how many angel investors, and are, are they still the angel investors, or you have different types of angel investors, or uh, have you worked with venture capital? Yeah, so this is going to be our first foray into venture capital. Um, a couple of the angels we have, some are more involved than others. Um, some are one, some are actually very closely associated with a lot of the angel networks throughout Southern California. So as a result, they, it allows us to get exposure to other fundraising avenues. And uh, one of our accelerator programs uh, actually was started by the family office to Adidas. Oh. So that actually had us out in Berlin. So. Uh, uh, even though they're not, they didn't invest with us as a venture capital at, from their venture capital arm, they ultimately do have a fund for Series C as well as Series A companies. So they've been able to provide those resources that typically are exclusive and reserved only to venture back companies. Awesome. Thank, thank you very much, Carter. Thank, thank you. Chase hey, well, and Jeff. Thank you guys very much for your time. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Guys. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Woohoo! Yeah. KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM.